Today in this lecture, we are going to discuss the graphical analysis of uh, decompensated heart failure. In the last lecture, we discussed compensated uh, cardiac failure and we discussed it with the help of a graph. Now, it is the same graph. In this graph, we see we have the uh, cardiac output and the venous return on the y-axis and uh, the right atrial pressure right atrial pressure and the mean systemic failure pressure on the x-axis. This graph is basically directly from Guyton and Hall and we see that in the decompensated heart failure the most important thing is that the cardiac output, uh, this black color, this black color curve, this black color curve, this is basically showing the cardiac output and in the decompensatory process this black color curve it never goes beyond this line which has been labeled as 5 liters per minute. Now it shows the cardiac output and venous return and this 5 liters per minute of cardiac output is basically the critical cardiac output level. This is the critical cardiac output level for normal fluid balance. So in the decompensated cardiac failure, this black curve, this black curve which is basically showing cardiac output, it never goes beyond this critical level which is around 5 liter per minute. So in cardiac failure basically the, com the cardiac output basically decreases below 5 liters per minute which is a normal cardiac output. In, compensate, in compensatory cardiac failure, in compensated cardiac failure, the cardiac output basically increases, initially decreases and then increases above the critical cardiac output level, above the uh, critical cardiac output level. But in the decompensated cardiac failure, this line, this cardiac output, this black color curve, basically it remains below this line. It remains below this line, which is basically showing the 5 liters per minute. Now let's see what happens. Initially, initially as soon as the cardiac uh, output decreases due to, uh, due to cardiac failure, the cardiac output suddenly decreases and it matches. Now these curves are basically showing the venous return curves. These are showing the venous return curve. On the very first day, the cardiac output curve, the cardiac output curve, it basically meets the venous return curve at this point, at this point, which has been labeled as point A. Now at point A, the cardiac output is around 3 liters per minute. Here we have the 5 liters per minute mark and this point A is basically showing the cardiac output of around 3 liters per minute which is basically due to some problem with the contraction of the heart and due to which the, the pumping, the output of the heart has decreased. Now this curve is basically showing the venous return curve which is basically normal and in a normal cardiac output, this cardiac output ha should have matched somewhere here above the 5 liter mark but due to uh, some problem or due to some cardiac uh, issue, this cardiac output has decreased. So it is basically meeting the venous return curve at this point, which is point A. Now at point A, the cardiac output is around 3 liters per minute. And at this point, the right atrial pressure, the right atrial pressure is also increased. Now it is more than 2. Normally, the right atrial pressure should be around 0. Normally, the right atrial pressure should be around 0. But now due to decreased cardiac output, the cardiac, the right atrial pressure, it has increased to around uh, 2 or 2.5. What happens after the initial event is that autonomic compensation occurs. Autonomic compensation occurs and there is sympathetic stimulation of the heart and the heart pumping increases, the pumping power of the heart increases and uh, the blood vessels of the uh, human body, they get contracted due to which the, the venous return increases. Now this is the red color is basically the normal venous return and due to the autonomic compensatory processes which occurs in around half a minute, the venous return basically increases. The venous return increases from this point which is around 6 liter to this point which may be around uh, 7.5 or 8 liters per minute. So the venous return curve has shifted upwards and it has also shifted outward. Now you should remember from our previous lectures that the point at which the venous return curve meet this x-axis, this point basically shows the mean systemic filling pressure. It shows the mean systemic filling pressure which is basically the pressure which is pumping or pushing the blood the blood towards the heart. So in, with the autonomic compensatory processes, this mean systemic filling pressure, it has increased from this point which is around 7 to this point which is around 10.5. So with the autonomic compensatory processes, the cardiac output has increased from point A to point B, which is around 4 liter per minute. So the cardiac output at this point A was around 3 liters per minute, but due to autonomic sympathetic system activation, the cardiac output has increased from 3 liter at this point to 4 liter at this point, or which is basically point B. But the thing is that due to autonomic compensatory processes, the right atrial pressure, the right atrial pressure, which normally is around 0, it has increased it has increased to around 5 mm of mercury to this point. Now at point B, the right atrial pressure is around 5 mm of mercury between 4 and 6. So here it's 4 mm of mercury, here it's 6 and the point B is between these two points between five and, uh, 4 and 6. So it's the right atrial pressure is around 5 mm of mercury. So the increase in cardiac output from point A to point B is at the cost of increase in the right atrial pressure and also at the cost of increase in the mean systemic filling pressure which has basically increased from 7 to around 10.5 mm of mercury. 
now the cardiac output the cardiac output is still below this level this is the critical level now the cardiac output has increased from point a to point b but it is still below this critical level so more fluid uh, collection will occur more fluid uh, retention will occur and on the second day which see this curve is now basically showing this uh, second day the venous return has further increased due to fluid retention by the kidneys now due to increase in venous return the venous return curve has shifted more upward on the second day it has shifted more upward from initially this point now to this point and it has also shifted rightward from initially point a to now point c but we see the cardiac output has increased initially 3 liters then 4 liters and now it is around 4.2 liters but this 4.2 liters is also less than 5 liters and 5 liters is the minimum requirement because this is the critical cardiac output level so the cardiac output has increased but it is still below the critical cardiac output level which is required for normal fluid balance at which the the kidneys will start functioning normally so fluid retention basically uh, is going on the, the the venous return keeps on increasing due to fluid retention the, the the venous return curve keeps on shifting upwards and towards the uh, right side now when it this uh, venous return curve on the day second when it meets with the cardiac output curve it is point c at point c the cardiac output is 4.2 liters initially 3 liters then 4 liters now 4.2 liters but at the expense of increase in the right atrial pressure the right atrial pressure the right atrial pressure has further increased from initially uh, around 3 then to around 5 mm of mercury and now it's around 7 mm of mercury because the cardiac the right atrial pressure is at this point is between 5 and uh, between 6 and 8 so it's around 7 mm of mercury so the so the right atrial pressure has increased and the mean systemic filling pressure the mean systemic filling pressure which initially was 7 then 10.5 at this point now it has increased to around 13 at this point now on the fourth day the fifth day and the sixth day and the eighth day the fluid retention will keep on occurring because the the kidneys are not allowing the urine output the kidneys are not functioning normally rather the kidneys are retaining the fluid so the fluid retention will occur due to which the the venous return will keep on increasing and the venous return can even reach this 15 liter mark because the y-axis is showing not only the cardiac output that's also showing the venous return which is in liters per minute so the venous return is increasing and it is matching or it is meeting the cardiac output curve at point d at point D, then on the point E, and then on the point F. But we see that what happened is that the compensation did not occur. The compensatory process did not complete, and the cardiac output, the cardiac output could not increase beyond this point. And it, this curve, the cardiac output curve, it remained below the five liter mark, and it basically. Uh, it basically the system basically keeps on uh, retaining the fluid the, the the right atrial pressure basically keeps on shifting point from point a to b to c to d to e and then finally to f at this point where the right atrial pressure has increased to 16 millimeter of mercury and similarly the mean systemic filling pressure at this point was 7 millimeter of mercury the mean systemic filling pressure is the pressure with which the the pressure the blood is coming towards the heart so it the mean systemic filling pressure has also increased from 7 to here more than around 17 or 18 millimeter of mercury but the cardiac output could not increase from uh, four above the 4.2 level so that's why it is basically known as the decompensated heart failure and this is the graphical analysis of the decompensatory process so it has been labeled as the graphical analysis of the decompensatory cardiac failure in which we have basically seen uh, discussed the cardiac output curve the venous return curve the cardiac output venous return the right atrial pressure and the mean systemic filling pressure and we saw that with the increasing fluid retention the the, the, the venous return kept on increasing from this uh, from the first day towards the second uh, fourth sixth and eighth day the right atrial pressure kept on increasing the the the, uh, the mean systemic filling pressure kept on increasing but the cardiac output could not increase beyond this point so that's why it uh, at, at point C, the deterioration, uh, deter deterioration starts and the cardiac output st further st uh, starts decreasing because th the whole system has decompensated and beyond this point, death will definitely occur. So that's all about the graphical analysis of the decompensated cardiac failure. Thanks a lot for watching the video.